California tiger salamanders are endemic to California. They spend about 95% of their lives in the uplands, which is grassland like this, grazed oak woodlands and some chaparral. Right now I'm standing in a stock pond that was probably built in the 50s by the ranchers out here. And the salamanders live in these stock ponds when they're breeding. When they're born, the legs are scrawny and weak. And as they mature and get stronger, then the legs get more buff. You can see how his legs, you can actually use them to maneuver a little bit. Likely years and years and years ago, there were vernal pools, which the salamanders used to breed in. The ranchers, when they came in, were digging up stock ponds for their cattle, and the salamanders moved in. As you can see, this area is grassland, it's rolling hills, it's beautiful. A lot of development has taken place in tiger salamander habitat. The ranches have been sold off to developers or even to ag conversion for vineyards. We're looking to conserve habitat and to keep the habitat connected. So we don't want barriers in between habitats and we want to have these large swaths of land that are conserved and managed for them in perpetuity. These species have evolved over millennia to these conditions, and certainly they're being bombarded with changes in a much faster pace, but I do think that there is some opportunity. Within those grasslands, which is the primary habitat, we're usually working with clients that are either doing uh, development-related projects, so they're going to be completely eliminating habitat. With those clients, we're usually working with a mitigation strategy that helps them come up with an approach that minimizes impacts while at the same time fully compensating for the loss of habitat that they're often incurring. There definitely is a balance between our business model, which is to develop and, and deliver homes for our customers, uh, and good stewardship of the land. The need for housing in California is a very complicated issue right now. We have a bit of a housing crisis here, and primarily it's generated by uh, the lack of availability. Parks and open space and the native species in the area is part of what we have to consider when we're developing property and when we own land. Part of the deal with developing our SAGE project was that we had to acquire additional land that was suitable California tiger salamander habitat. Fortunately, I was able to find a rancher that had a piece of property that was ideal. And so I spent a lot of time negotiating with that property owner for how we could use his land as a mitigation area for my project. He could continue to use his land for what he had traditionally used it for, for generations, which was cattle ranching. It took six to eight months of having a lot of steak dinners in order to convince him that it was a good thing for both of us. We're working on a site that's a residential mixed-use development. We are in the process of relocating California tiger salamanders from this site and moving them to some protected areas, mitigation areas that are being established as mitigation for this project. The lands that we are protecting are some of the best tiger salamander habitat left in California particularly. We have about 700 acres that are being established in and around this development area as mitigation. They will be under a conservation easement, a management plan oriented towards protecting the salamander, and all of that is being funded by the developer. There's a, an endowment fund that will take care of the land in perpetuity. 
I do believe that it's important for us to plan for and understand what our impacts as human beings are to the natural environment. I'll have guys come to me and be like, yeah, I went home and I, I Googled those species and that's really cool. I had no idea that they lived in burrows their whole lives and they use ponds. And so I think that there, there is some value to that educational opportunity. California tiger salamanders are one of California's legacies. You know, whether it's the citizens group that's protecting the salamanders that are walking across the road and getting run over by cars or it's the developers coming in for an incidental take permit, or if it's the ranchers that are maintaining their ponds and grazing the land. It's gonna take all of us working together to make sure that all of our listed species can survive.